for me, it's less of that pushing to become this thing, this person, and really honoring every day in any way that I can who I already am. And I am all of those things that I I dream to be. It's just a matter of, you know, uncovering it through play, through creative practice, through breaths, through um, having deep, meaningful conversations, through being in the world and out in nature. Like, so I, I, I just, yeah, I want to make it a practice every day to remind myself that, yeah, I am the one that I've been waiting for. You're listening to the Almost 30 Podcast, hosted by Krista Williams and Lindsay Simsek. Almost 30 started as a conversation about the transition from our 20s to our 30s. But then we realized life is full of transitions. So we expanded our mission. We are an intuition-led, wellness-focused lifestyle podcast that promises to deliver authentic conversations, diverse points of view, and insights rooted in optimism, growth, and intention. The Almost 30 Nation community is a group of purposeful dreamers who are smart, passionate, and always seeking the full potential in every aspect of their lives. At Almost 30, we're making magic together. We dream it, and then we do it. Thanks so much for tuning into the Almost 30 Podcast. Here we go. Hello, everyone. Hello, and welcome (laughs) to Almost 30 Podcast. So glad you're here. It's Linz and Krista, and we're in the last day of the 2019, and we're just kind of sitting here in awe and reflecting and laughing and holy shitting ourselves <laughs> over a lot of things. But um, we like to end the year with a conversation with each other, with you all, just on on what's happened and things we're proud of, not so proud of, just keeping it real always. Um, and we recently had some conversations that just made us go a little bit deeper because I think, I don't know, towards the end of the year, people do the same things where it's like, okay, so what are your resolutions for the new year? And sometimes it doesn't really um, integrate Mm -hmm. for me Yep. when I do what everyone else is doing. So it was really great. It was interesting when I asked the group recently in the secret Facebook group. So for those of you that are unfamiliar with almost 30, we have a secret Facebook group and there's, you know, thousands of women in there that are really open and honest with each other about how they're feeling, if they want advice, if they want recommendations, all of the things. And I think there was hundreds and hundreds of comments when I asked to check in on how everyone's feeling during the holiday season. It it, it was bleak. <laughs> it was very bleak. I'm, I'm very worried for everyone. I do think the first through third week of December yes. is like kind of bleak. Like you think it's going to be like jingly jangly Mm -hmm. holiday joy and it's actually ridden with anxiety yes (laughs) there's the family the food and you know I remember working in when I worked in the corporate world last year I think was my last year in the corporate world the holidays are weird because it's slow but you're trying to wrap everything up there's a lot of pressure and you're not doing anything at work sometimes or you're doing too much so there's like an imbalance and then there's holiday parties I remember there'd be a bunch of shit in the office, like food wise, which was annoying Mm. because you're like at home eating shit and then you're at work eating shit and you're just like, and then it's dark out. So the, the being at work thing I remember was really challenging, but for us, it's like a different type of challenge, but Mm -hmm. everyone was, you know, not doing well. So sending everyone lots of love and patience, especially as you know, we have new year's approaching and January approaching, and hopefully you guys are getting the deep breath the deep breath that you deserve. But especially too, I really, and I'm going to kind of turn the conversation in the group this week about what we can be proud of from the year. Because I know right when we're in the thick of it, it can be really challenging too. But it's really important. Like even if you're just scrolling through your Instagram 
or looking in your journal to look at what you've done in the year. And that can help to really jog your memory as far as like looking at old photos or old captions. Sometimes sure. I'll read my old captions and I'll just be like, oh, wow, I was really feeling you know, this type of way at that time. Just finding some semblance to jog your memory and to really just remind yourself of everything you've done in 2019, I think is really the point. And even if sometimes like the failures stick out to you, you know, if that kind of leaves a sting longer... Uh, than you'd like it to. I just think there's a way in which, especially at the end of the year, that we can just have a lot of compassion for ourselves and those failures. And I don't know. I just... There's no way that you can grow without those. And I know it's kind of cheesy and we hear it all the time, but just to reiterate, like there is absolutely no way that we can expand without a bit of resistance and really moments that make us stop and reflect and maybe pivot or make a different decision or see ourselves in a new light. So I just like want to remind you because it's mainly a reminder for myself too, is to have a lot of compassion for yourself if you're harping on those quote unquote failures. Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, But we had a, we had a um, conversation with our coach, Aaron Rose recently to end the year. We're going to continue working with him in the new year. And, um, you know, he just, he just gave us some things to think about that I, I thought would be um, helpful to start this conversation before Krista and I share kind of what what we worked with this year, what we're proud of, not so proud of, and what we're hoping for in the new year um, and setting intentions for in the new year. But he was talking about goals and intentions and he emphasized that we should be also writing the why behind intention and our goals. So this this helps, and he, he wrote this to us um, in review, this helps prime and clarify your manifestations so that the how can be left up to the universe to create in the most aligned way possible. So this really, for me, feels like it's like a... Um, You set the intention and then you send a message to the universe that this is why. It's almost like that thread, like that golden thread so that they can kind of tug on it too and you can work together to create this thing that you want to bring into the world. I thought that was really, really powerful because oftentimes I'll just write a goal or intention and I'm not so clear about the why. So when I'm able to articulate, I feel much more grounded. Right. I felt like within Aaron's notes, one of the the parts that really stuck out to me and almost hit me like a ton of of bricks last week when I was re-listening to his episode on our show was how you do the work is the work. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really my lesson. That's a huge lesson for me. And I think for our community, when we do think about the work, you know, the internal transformation that we want to, to have, to feel or create so much of the process and the goal of the process is lost in actually doing the work when it's very challenging and painful. Mm-hmm. You know, not to say that there should be spiritual bypass of uh, healing and and pain and expression of emotion and darkness and shadow. But for me, it's really just too much of a focus on like a self uh, masochistic way of doing work rather than like finding joy in it because that's really the goal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the in her meeting the other day, he's like, the mission is to enjoy life. Yes. The mission is to feel good. Yep. (laughs) Honestly. And I was like, oh, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, that's that's something we experience, but not on a consistent basis. And I'm not always thinking of it as the goal. Um, I'm thinking about more tangible like things that we can attain. So I just thought that was a really, really good reminder. I love the the part where there he has the reminder reminder from Aaron to us and to also all of almost 30 nation you are amazing beings of light and every question you are living with will be part of the ongoing medicine and magic you share with the world. Mm. Yeah. You're amazing beings of light and every question you are living actually will be part of the ongoing medicine and magic you will share with the world. So every question mm-hmm. that you're grappling with right now will be a part of medicine that you share for others in the future, which is really beautiful. We were also talking about, you know, not worrying about making sense to anyone but yourself. And he actually brought up Kanye. He was like in a, in a Kanye hole on the internet. And one of his quotes is my brand is saying what I think, even when it's different than what you expect and what I said yesterday. So it, it is allowing for that evolution and that change and that dynamic part of you. So, you know, I don't, I don't know if, 
you know, the contradiction thing is something that I think if, if you have eyes on you is a concern. Like, I don't want to contradict myself, but I also don't think that should stop you, us from changing our minds, trying something new, like being outside of what people expect from us. So, yeah, I think that's a huge thing that hopefully people grow into when you get older, you know, Mm -hmm. you realize that that's one of my One thing that I actually wanted to talk about with my changes was giving myself permission in 2019 to be someone that changes all the time. Yeah. So much of my life, I was like working against changing so much because it was so different than everyone else. It was not, you know, normal to what everyone else was doing. And and I think people want to change and evolve and they do in their own way. And mine just felt like it was very outside of the norm. And now it's just like full acceptance of like completely letting myself evolve and letting myself have different opinions. And then also hopefully giving people grace and uh, grace to do the same, you know, to have breathing room to change their mind, to be vegan one year and not the other, you know, to be spiritual one year and and not the other, to drink one year year and not the other. There's so many points of evolution that we need to like let more breathing room for. And I'm definitely hopefully doing as much as I can doing that for myself. Yeah. Okay. So our intention you know, for this conversation with you guys is to kind of run through our own personal 2019 and what we're looking into for 2020. We've done a lot as a community. So a lot of this stuff references Almost 30 Nation and everything, you know, that we've done together and the impact that you've had on Lindsay and I. I think that's been the biggest change for everything is how much you guys have changed our life. But this entire process, you know, definitely encouraging and inspiring hopefully inspiring you guys to do a similar exercise for yourself that helps you to run through, you know, your wins for the year, your learnings, what you're going to release from 2019 into 2020, your vision, what you're going to, or what you want to look and feel like when you're going from 2020 to 2021, and then your identity. So who do you need to be in order to live your vision in 2020? What does that person look feel, sound, act like. Um, So through this process, it'll just be really good to kind of get grounded and be proud of everything you've done, release the things that don't serve you and get excited for 2020. I'm pumped. Yeah. And just find again, that compassion and know that like within community, it's usually um, an easier way to not only release, but also realize the things coming to you and to open up enough to allow those things to come in. So here with you, you know, it's, it's been a beautiful year, but also not, not perfect in the least. And we want to like celebrate both, both sides of it. I get a lot of questions from Almost 30 Nation about creating really healthy meals that don't take a lot of time. And every single time, I can't help it, but I recommend Daily Harvest. At Daily Harvest, they are freezing fruits and vegetables at the peak of freshness. They work with organic farmers to source their um, their fruits and vegetables, and they freeze them within 24 hours to lock in the nutrients. And everything stays fresh in your freezer until you're ready to enjoy it. It. These meals are so thoughtful and delicious. Like when I say delicious, I can't lie about food. You know what I mean? They have smoothies, hearty soups, harvest bowls, lattes, overnight oats, over 65 different options, which is just an incredible selection. And um, you can customize your box. So this is a subscription service that I love. I get it every other month. I get 24 cups every other month and it's just so easy. It takes under five minutes to prepare anything that they have. And honestly, for me, it's less than five minutes. I just toss it in a pan or I put it uh, in the blender. It's awesome. And you can always customize, like add an avocado or an egg to the harvest bowl or add your favorite nut milk to the smoothie. It's really up to you. So you can try Daily Harvest by going to dailyharvest.com using the code ALMOST30 to get $25 off your first box. So that's promo code ALMOST30. When you go to dailyharvest.com, you'll get $25 off your first box. We talk to a lot of you out there who want to 
teach what you are passionate about. And you've asked us about our courses and how we did them. And honestly, Teachable has made it so easy to put our content and what we love and what we're passionate about and what we are super knowledgeable in online and customize it so that whoever is taking in the information feels super empowered and it's super easy to navigate. So Teachable's mission is to revolutionize the way knowledge is shared by empowering passionate individuals to kickstart their entrepreneurial careers by creating and selling online courses no matter what their skill set is. And it's user-friendly. It's easy to build your course and start selling ASAP and it's customizable. So for us, that's super important. We want to make sure that the branding is still almost 30. It feels like us. And so our vision can come through the platform. And what's awesome about Teachable, Chloe and our team has told us so many times over that they're here to help. So your Teachable membership will give you access to online resources that will help you go from idea to launch. And they have webinars, free downloads. They really want you to succeed. So you're not alone on this journey. Sometimes the entrepreneurial life can feel so lonely and they really are there every step of the way. So if you'd like to try Teachable, go to teachable.com slash almost 30 to receive one free month of their pro monthly plan. This gives you access to their most comprehensive set of tools so you can create the course you've always dreamed of teaching. That's teachable.com slash almost 30 to receive one free month of their pro monthly plan. You'll also get access to Teachable U, which will just help you through the process, how to navigate the platform and all of that. So teachable.com slash almost 30. All right. You want to start with some, some, some wins? wins? So we did, um, <laughs> of course, we had to, we did for almost 30. We had a team retreat a few weeks ago. We went to Topanga with our entire team and it was the best. We just had to run through and really celebrate our successes. We move so quickly. I especially move very quickly and I'm always on to the next. So my ability to really look at what we've done is always helpful when I have everything written down and I kind of am in a position where I want to share all the amazing things that we did with our entire team. So we had a presentation prepared with all of those wins. So it was really, really helpful Mm -hmm. because everything seemed like years ago, like our website relaunch update, the branding, everything like that is like, seems like 14 years ago. Some of my favorite things um, and favorite wins were the launch of our ambassador program. So in January, we said that we wanted to help people create community where they are. And so we launched our ambassador program, which was inspired by the meetings that we had with you amazing people on tour. And that's been beautiful to see grow. Truly. I mean, that's that's something that we always felt like would be, but the fact how easy it was to to let that grow on its own. And obviously, Shara is the kind of the spearheading that whole portion of Almost 30. But it's like the trust in, in the mission and the trust in our intention. That to me was like the biggest learning there where it was like, yes. we just made an intention and it has just taken on a life of its own. And really helped me to trust what we're doing even more. I trust what we're doing, but it's like those moments that's like, oh, wow, we don't have to push with this at all. You know, it's it's so natural. And we've just seen and heard from so many of you who are, you know, you have a new group of best friends and you're spending time together and supporting one another. And it's just a, a really solid confirmation. Yeah. The ambassador program is beautiful. You know, Mm -hmm. community is what it's all about. So just to even have one, even meet one friend is the key. You know, I always say that with our community calls, it's like, it's not about the numbers. It's really about the quality and people feeling less alone. So Mm -hmm. the ambassador program was a huge highlight for almost 30 in my eyes. Um, Another one is the retreat. We mm-hmm. said we wanted to do a retreat and it just so happened that we got to do a retreat at Calamigos Guest Ranch, which is the most beautiful space in Malibu. It's heaven on earth. It's so just spiritual. It feels so vibey. It's gorgeous decor and the staff is amazing. So the retreat was super special. It was 24 women. We sold out in like a week. We had amazing guests. We had breath work, meditation, Reiki, astrology, sex, conversations, amazing food, health, nutrition discussions. I mean, it was like 
powerful. Yeah, it was really powerful. And those 24 women, it was like divine how they all came together and um, all from all over the world, actually, and just met each other where they were and connected on such a deep level that they're all still very good friends, keep in touch, and hopefully maybe they'll re- return for this year's retreat. But yeah, I was really, really proud of of us too. I think, you know, we hold space a lot, but for, you know, an extended period of time, four days and with a small group, it's, it's a particular type of space. And so while it was challenging at times because Krista and I, if we're allowed to let go and go in with you all, we do. And as such, sometimes it just, it puts us in a space of like, uh uh-oh, like now can we hold space for people? Because we just went there with you and we just released. And I don't know if I can be there for you right now. (laughs) So it was a good learning there as well, you know, to be able to to let go, but then also uh, find time for ourselves to regenerate and like recharge so that we can give even more. Our schedule was a little packed. (laughs) A little packed. (laughs) We were just so excited to have a retreat. It was like, (laughs) it was insane. So next year, we're actually doing a retreat um, for you guys in 2020. Mm -hmm. Stay on the lookout for that. It's going to be at Calamigos again. Um, We're going to have amazing sessions and, you know, all of our favorite guests from Almost 30 will be there but we're going to make the schedule a little bit more chill. (laughs) It was so intense. I think everyone loved it, but it was just like tiring. Yeah. Cause when I, I I don't, I haven't been on many retreats, but if I think about it, I'm like, oh, like I do love some, it's called free time. Yes. (laughs) Alone time. But it was still just such a success. So we're excited to see you this year. And I loved, I loved too. I mean, we, we had our first live shows which were major for us, I think just to feel the the brand elevate in so many ways and be in front of a live audience like that. Like if it's more presentational. So I just, I, I did feel almost 30, the entity like kind of smile and, and clap along. Cause like, I thought that was, that was a big one for us. We had over like 450 people in San Francisco that was our first live show and we've done ones in New York and LA since and we're basically only doing live shows next year as as far as um you know events go and we're just really excited to curate a unique type of show for you all you know i think i i think we're unique in a lot of ways but i i, I think we we set the standard at least in the podcast game as it relates to experiences when we're live so I I just want to commit to that and and always be thinking about you all first when it comes to curating those shows. Um, so yeah, I'm just I was really proud of us and excited to to further ideate on that. Yeah, you know, especially with LA, we had big beautiful curves. Yes, the dancers from LA. There was five fabulous fucking amazing women mm-hmm. dancing and twerking on stage before the show, and the best. We did some like stand up ish type stuff. So it was just like a good variety show. Mm-hmm. Just want to be entertaining, want you guys to mm-hmm. laugh, want you to have fun, and want to, you know, get exposure to as many amazing people that we have exposure to as possible. Give you guys exposure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It was, yeah, that was a, the live shows were huge. That was huge. Mm-hmm. I had another one um, speaking at Create and Cultivate. And Pop yeah. Sugar. Yeah. That was crazy. You know, we were like, we saw Pop Sugar Playground happening in New York, set the intention, we wanted to do it set the intention that we wanted to speak at Create and Cultivate and spoke at both of them. Yeah. You know, which felt really exciting and aligned and completely so honored. Pop Sugar was awesome. Pop Sugar was a blast. We like, were nervous. So nervous. Yeah. We're like, is anyone going to come? I know. <laughs> Truly. And they did. We talked with Elisa Vitti at Pop Sugar. And, you know, that's a, that's a type of conversation around hormones and, and female health that, you know, you... It's very popular among our community, but we just didn't know if people were going to gravitate towards it, but it was packed and and people were so interested in what she had to say. And so, yeah, I think the why in terms of, you know, speaking at conferences, events, summits like Pop Sugar and Create and Cultivate is is all is not only like aligning with brands that we really, really respect and admire, at least for me, it's also meeting 
and growing a new audience. You know, it's it's like that cross promotion and promotion is the wrong word because that's not the intention. It's more just like it excites me to reach people that have never heard almost thirty before. Like I don't, yeah, we don't have the. Because there's a lot of messages that I'm like. This is why we started. We wish we had the messages that we are have access to. I wish that everyone had uh, access to the messages that our guests are able to share with them. Yes, exactly. And we are able to share very (laughs) every once in a while. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we're just like, yep. We're going totally. through it too, man. The um, it's so hilarious in the presentation of the 2019 in review. It's like, it seems like it's so professional, but I just used a stock keynote and it has a Ducati on each of the slides. Oh, so I it's know. like it's I like know. has the fact that's like <laughs> written up in Forbes, number three on the charts, sold out <laughs> tour stops, and then there's literally a red Ducati right next to every <laughs> single one of the slides. Because <laughs> I was like, dude, I don't want to replace. Oh, that was before I gave those it to you to gifts. add those. We replaced it with gifts, which were amazing. But before it was like, I was like, dude, I do not have time to find everything. (laughs) Um, But highly recommend that. Even if you have a team of two or three people to do just like a retreat, if you can get together, even a dinner and just talk about all your wins. Yeah. Because I think even the girls on our team were like, wait, what? You know, they kind of, everyone's moving so quickly. Everyone's focused on, you know, themselves and sometimes being human on this planet, you're so in your head that it's hard to think about the year. So I think that was so helpful. So I'd love to talk about, we talked about almost 30, maybe some of our personal wins. Yeah, yeah definitely. For me, I, as I open up my notebook, I'm I like, know. okay. I know I have my <laughs> digital like notes Personal open. win, okay. <laughs> I started therapy this year and it's been something that's really changed my life. And I, I never thought like, I need a therapist at all. I always felt like I was in the groups and environments where life kind of felt like therapeutic often enough to where I just felt taken care of and supported. But the idea of having, you know, a relationship with a therapist where over time they really get to know me and not only my everyday, but like everything about me, how I grew up and and how we can connect how I grew up and even ancestrally um, to what I experience day to day as a human being now has been so life changing. And also just to have that once a week and maybe it looks different for you guys. Maybe it's once a month or once every two weeks, but to have an ability to one talk, but also to, it feels like a flush to me. So most likely I'm crying just because I'm an emotional person and things are going to come through and it feels so good every single time, whether we talk about really hard things or really happy things, like it just feels really good. And I didn't understand the value of it until I committed to it consistently. And I've committed every week for this whole year, just about like I'd skip weeks when we were out of town, but I don't know. I, I, I think about, you know, growing up and my parents never went to therapy and I'm, It feels like I'm doing it for myself first and then like for my future relationship, for my for my kids. Like it just it does feel healing for more than just me. So I'm like, I'm proud of myself for that. Mm. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, that's the the true work. And so many girls on our team have been doing it too, which Mm -hmm. is great. Chloe um, has really, really valued therapy. I'm most proud of this year even a deeper focus on my inward focused mindset. So I've always been someone that truly focused on myself in the way that I think every situation is because of me. I truly think I'm co-creating with the universe in taking responsibility for everything good and everything bad. So, but this year I've just deepened that where I really am in every relationship and every situation. I think about how I've impacted the results that I'm seeing. Mm-hmm what about me or my energy or my intention for the day or my rushing or my intensity of energy or my joy or my sense of humor is bringing about what I'm seeing in front of me. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, you know, especially as it relates to my personal relationship with Justin, when we first moved to Los Angeles, we were having, you know, we were just fighting a lot about just a bunch of things. Like we were kind of going through a really hard time where I wasn't working. He wasn't working either. We were just figuring it out. And I would look so intensely at things that I felt like he could do better. 
and that I felt like he could communicate better and felt like he could, you know, be more patient or be more understanding or read my mind or all of these things. And now I just seriously always take a step back and try and put myself in their shoes even more intensely and try and change myself first before I expect the situation to change. And um, I've done that in the business with you know our team as much as I can. Um, really, just thinking outside of myself and think about you know, okay, could I have written an email more clearly? Am I giving them enough praise? Am I making sure that they know how valued they are? Am I giving them enough space? Am I making sure that I'm being clear enough in my directions? Am I giving them enough support? Am I giving them enough insight into what I'm thinking about? Am I giving them insight into the why? And then even with partners, with our sponsors and partners, like there's just so much of it that I've really felt like I've done a good job in a way that feels like I'm going to create better things and I have created better results, which is very nice. Sometimes it can be challenging because it's often boring to always have the blame on yourself, but it just like has been really fruitful for me with like, especially even my mom, the relationship with Mm, my mom. Totally. And the evolution there has been, you know, really interesting and beautiful to see and just taking as much responsibility as I can. So I felt like that was something that, you know, in 2019, especially when we did a lot of healing things, ayahuasca, you know, ceremonies, I work with healers regularly. Um, Yeah. Onsite has been, you know, deep. It just has given me more of an encouragement in that area. Totally. Like more, it just puts the control back in your hands in a way, you know? I think that's beautiful. Yeah, because I, I feel that. like, I mean, that's part of con- elevating consciousness is yeah. getting out of victim mentality. Yes. You know? Yes. Not that there aren't parts or areas of my life where I live in that, but it definitely... Totally. Totally. We got a particular message recently about an artist in our community who never felt the confidence to really do her art full time. She was always told that being an artist meant you're a starving artist, but she finally took the leap and has seen so much abundance, especially financially and just fulfillment as well. And we followed up with her and recommended that she use HoneyBook. So if you run a creative business, you know, you know, you want to make your clients feel good and secure and you know you want your business to feel professional and so if you're struggling with tedious administrative tasks you can let HoneyBook do the work and make you look good if you have a great idea for a business honestly what is holding you back if it's this like tedious work think like don't even think about it please 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 invest in HoneyBook this will help your plan get off the ground it's an online business management tool that lets you control your client communication bookings contracts and invoices all in one place and you can even use HoneyBook to consolidate services you already use like QuickBooks Google Suite and MailChimp and you know you'll you'll be one of 75,000 creatives on there photographers designers event professionals any other entrepreneurs, you won't be alone. So if you'd like to try a HoneyBook, this is an insane offer. HoneyBook is offering our listeners 50% off when you visit honeybook.com slash almost 30. Payment is flexible and this promotion applies whether you pay monthly or annually. So you can go to honeybook, H-O-N-E-Y book.com slash almost 30 to get 50% off your first year. During the holiday season and into the new year, honestly, CBD has been a savior for me. Um, It's one of the many natural compounds in the hemp plant with significant therapeutic medicinal benefits. And they work with the body's natural endocannabinoid system to help regulate many bodily processes like appetite, mood, sleep, immune system. And you won't get high, so there's no THC. And it's just been a really great addition to my wellness routine and cured nutrition knows how to do it. They have been inspired by nature and really have, you know, had a desire to create a community that makes an impact. And so we're really proud to partner with them. Some of my favorite products include their cookie dough. Oh my God. Like when I say this is the shit, like when they have it in stock, you need to stock up and put it in your fridge or freezer 
so good. Their cured classic mint oil is some of my favorites. I just got this from my sister and she's dying over it. It has a really beautiful mint flavor. I put it under my tongue or in my coffee. And then I also am obsessed with their cured spices. They have a cinnamon and honey that I sprinkle on my coffee. Life is good, y'all. They also have nootropics. They have gel caps of CBD. They have hemp hearts, hemp oil, olive oil. Their products are super thoughtful and the ingredients are pure. You can trust Cured. So you can go to curednutrition.com. Use the code ALMOST30 for $10 off your purchase of $50 or more. That's C-U-R-E-D nutrition.com. Use our code ALMOST30 for $10 off your purchase of $50 or more. I also thought like both of us just within the business and personally, like, you know, really, and you can speak to this too, but just trusting ourselves more, you know, I I think as we grow as a brand and business and more eyes are on us, I think there is a possibility that others' opinions might make us doubt certain decisions or directions, but I just think we've found an integrity and continue to nurture that integrity with ourselves and with each other and with the team. And now like our managers, agents, hopefully we can cultivate that as well. Where like, we just, we know the intention and we keep that, that intention and those promises to ourselves, which in turn uh, allows us to trust ourselves more and more and build respect for ourselves more and more and respect for each other and love for each other and ourselves. It's just like this really cool cycle. You know, the business has kind of taught me that as an individual and affected like my personal, my personal life and how I feel about myself. So I just felt that very strongly this year. Yeah. I feel like there's like a force field around us in that sense that like people know that we act in integrity because we've been acting in integrity for three years with the business. We've never, I've, you know, there have been deals that I've done that I've like, that I wasn't like, "Ah, I'm so so into this, but my intention was good. I'm like, maybe the audience is into this because this is the right demographic, but there hasn't been a decision that we've made that has been glaringly out of integrity. Totally. And there hasn't been like a person that we've worked with that has been glaringly out of integrity. They usually show themselves before. And that's huge. You know, I, I feel like our reputation in the industry is that we do have on people that we believe in. If we don't align with the conversation, we will either redo it or won't have it. You know, we have certain standards for the people that are that work with us. We have certain standards for our partners. And I think that's so important. You know, so, I, I feel like if we didn't start this, if we started this earlier on in our early 20s, I don't think I would I would have not be I would not be here. No. And that's, you know, <laughs> no <period>. the important <laughs> thing is like when I look at people that are starting businesses younger or just, you know, if I was myself, basically I'm talking to myself, if I would have had this gift given to me of almost 30 in my early 20s, it would have blow I would have blew up the place. Mm-hmm. You know, just not well being, so much of you know your contribution to the business too has been because of your experience as well. You know, so it's like you you had to yeah experience all of those things. Yeah. Just personality too, like for sure. Your ability to be confident in your decisions when you're when you get a little older. I think you can have that when you're younger. I just sadly didn't. Yeah. Is like Same. completely. And just and just having I having a little bit more patience. Not a lot, but a little bit more. Where you're like, we will actually take the longer road. And it's less reactive yes. now. It's less it's just more grounded and we're, I'm more of an observer of my life rather than being like, mm-hmm. <laughs> why is this happening to me? Yeah. <laughs> and not, not needing to be, that I'm actually really working on that, not needing to be completely liked by everyone. Yes. You know, and that's because, and that's a lot of times for us within our business, it's important that we're liked. And that means me loving myself first. But if people that we interact with, I don't align with them or I'm not into it. That's okay. And the same vice versa. Yeah. It's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go talk shit about them. not going to wish them ill will. Yeah. It's just like my energy is best spent someplace else. Couldn't have said it better. And some learnings. Oh my gosh. (laughs) So many, you know, what are, what are those learnings 
and or what messages would you want to send to your younger self now that you're on the other side? And what did your mistakes teach you? That's something that I often don't really... I, I do reflect yeah. on, but not as often as I'd, I'd like to. I kind of write them off a little bit. <laughs> yeah. If I'm thinking about the business as a whole this year, you know, it was... The schedule was jammed in a jammed. good way. Super proud of everything that we got done and and everyone we reached and the tour especially. I mean, we were in, I don't even know, 15 cities all over the world. And I think what we were, at least for me, what I was learning in real time was the power of the in-between of mm. that rest time, of that incubation time before a big project or to let ideas come through to actually quite literally recharge so that we can show up as the best Krista and Lindsay for wherever we are. And I think we did a really great job this year, but I do think that in order to maintain this, that it'll be our job to create that space for um, rest, for play, for life outside so that it influences what we're doing here. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that's something I'm still learning in real time, but, and just really, you know, with every decision think, and I want to be more present with my thinking about the intentionality of the decision rather than looking backwards at things and thinking about my intention. So was my intention based around fear that I'm not going to be relevant or fear that we're not going to make any money or fear, fear-based patterns that I used to have when I worked in my, the corporate world related to like the inability to make money doing what you love. Am I bringing those into what I'm doing now? Mm-hmm. So it's like, why am I doing so much? Why am I doing all of these things? Is it truly because I want to, or is it because I'm feeling space or what is it? And I think like, I don't know, just being more thoughtful about that. I don't think it was any mistakes. I don't feel like we made any mistakes. I think the one mistake I will say, I don't know if this is a mistake, but like, I don't, I wouldn't have done anything in December. Yeah. If I could look back at it. Totally. You know, and I know that's like a, a privileged place to be. And I don't mean do anything. I mean, do anything in the public. I mean, do any outward events, do any travel. I think we've done enough events and travel this year. So I would have definitely taken December as a time to like tie loose ends. Like, yes go through all financing, go through the goals. What is, how is the team doing? You know, how can we support and check in on them and just be more thoughtful and intentional about like supporting those around us and ourselves just for an entire month. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. Now we know. Yeah, completely. Team take notes. Someone take a note somewhere. (laughs) Completely now we know. (laughs) And we also, you know, huge learning for us, I think for our team too. And it was really just one person saying it and giving our entire team the permission. And I think, for everyone, this is really applicable, especially for women, is not being all things to all people. And I think, I definitely take that one to heart. You know, I definitely, I don't know if I want to be all things to all people, but just really understanding that, you know, the voice and and message will reach the right people at the right time when they're Mm -hmm. ready to hear it. And that's not, that's not, just for almost 30, that's for any message. I've read books that didn't apply and I didn't really resonate with at all. And then I picked them up five years later and it's you know the greatest book in the world. It happens quite often that when you're ready to receive the message, you will receive it. Oftentimes too, when you talk to your friends, you're telling them something and you're like advice or whatever, and they're just like not getting it. Someone else says it and they get it. You know, that's kind of the way of the world. So really learning that the way that we are and the way that I show up will be for the right people at the right time. And that is for our community, that's for the friends of the community and the people that need need to hear this, these messages. So working with Aaron Rose was really helpful for that and really just understanding, understanding that and that it's okay and it's all part of the process. Truly, yeah. And it's and it's for me like about not taking things personally because of that like it is this like divine intersection of of moments of when someone listens to our uh, an episode it it hits a chord with them and they give us feedback and it's it's really not taking where they are personally and trusting that because they found that content 
that struck a chord in them and made it be it's a little negative reaction, that this is a learning for them. It's on us to evaluate the comment to see whether it's true, whether we can just kind of let it go and let it be. Um, So just taking every moment where I feel um, maybe a certain way about feedback yeah. as as a moment to um, to grow for yeah. b- for both sides and just trust that they will and not not feeling the need to make a point with them per se not yeah. letting the ego be make a point yep you know yeah and there was um you know what we did within the community was we reinstitutionalized almost thirty online and as a business working with Aaron of course and this was doing a few things. So this was revising the internal statement of who the ideal community member is, what they look like, what they feel like, what they're energetically like, how they support one another, how they show up in the world, what their values are. You know, this person that we meet all the time at our events and making sure that we are being conscious about being inclusive for everyone that fits that ideal type. And that's more an alignment of their values. You know, are they open? Are they kind? Are they communicative? Are they fun loving are they humorous all of those type of things we also upgraded the facebook group rules and the overall community standards to make sure that we're in alignment with this new internal set of standards for our ideal community member and community we clarified our pers- partnership accountability and alignment standards to one another and to the team and then we upgraded our energetic protocols for when we interact with the public so standing in our power being more present being more thoughtful energetically about how we're going to show up so that we don't have like a porous energy body that can leach or can be leached into. Yeah, I think I think we'll really, especially in the new year, feel the uh, the grounding in that institutionalization. Whoa. I know. You know, it's... Um, and it also is a gentle push for us and for the community, you know, if there is, and by shadow work, I don't mean we need to like go dark and do a deep dive, but it's more just like there are things that we can really look at and, and we can have these interactions with people in our community that might make us feel a certain way and take it as that opportunity to dig in and and just expand. You know, I think your life is waiting for you to to take those moments as medicine. Yeah. And I think, you know, for us, that comes on a scale of this is our job with Almost 30 and to interact with everyone. So we receive feedback related to Almost 30 and who we are, et cetera. But this also can apply at work. Feedback at work, feedback with your family, feedback in a relationship, feedback in a friendship. And there's always, you know, life is this exchange of feedback, of of personalities, of information. And all of it can be medicine if we really allow it. Yeah. Although it's painful, although it's frustrating, and, you know, sometimes you just want to live. Um, it can just be really helpful. And I think my ability to... I think there was a point in time in the year at the... Ha- right before we started working with Aaron where I was like, okay, no. You know, I am going to be a sovereign being outside of the expectations of what people have of me. And I've always done that in my life for better or for worse. But being so dedicated to the community and to their thoughts and to how they're feeling and doing, but removing myself outside of anything that like doesn't serve me and isn't for my best interest was like something that I decided to do. And and once I decide something, it's pretty easy for me to apply it. I'm like done. And so that was like something that I was proud of this year is that I do take feedback seriously, Mm -hmm. but only when it's like from an aligned place. Personal learnings. What are your personal learnings this year? What have you learned? Mm. I, um, you know, I learned that I put a lot of, I put a lot of value in when others value me Mm. and which I think is good, but my value in myself did not exceed that. You know what I mean? So I really want to, I learned that that's a thing. Have I learned how to do it? Not quite yet. But I I want to put my value in myself from me to me before others so that I can kind of like fill myself up first. And it's almost an added bonus if people see what I see. Yeah, I think, you know, so much of it comes from like wanting to be validated as a kid, wanting to be seen, wanting to be like, 
you know, want my parents to be proud of me, want this, want that. And so I think as I learn this, I'm going to find a lot of power and confidence in just seeing the value in myself um, before others tell me it's there. For sure. That's a huge one. Yeah, it's a big one. It's almost like you were saying like, you know, even seeing your evolution, because I feel like you're doing that so much better than you were at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. You know, not in like a bad way, like it was bad before, but it's just so much... It's almost like before you were speaking it and then you were catching up to that. Mm -hmm. You were saying that you wanted to feel that way or that your recognition of it, like you energetically caught up to it and now you're sort of standing in that of like what you've created through the year of saying that. Totally. Because that's a hard one. It's a really hard one. I mean, I still, it's not struggle with it. I just notice it. And, but I, I'm, I feel lucky in that I'm in situations, in the business, in friendships, you know, with my parents, with therapists, it's like, I'm able to really exercise it and work that muscle and talk that out and be in a supportive environment to just step more into that. Cause not everybody's in supportive environments like that, you know? So if you can find Completely. yourself in a more supportive environment for that type of growth, I think that's important because, you know, not all people and not all situations are going to be a good soil for that yeah. type of growth. It's almost like people, sometimes they value themselves. Other people don't. Other people value them. They don't. It's like, for it's sure. always that game. And it always just ebbs and flows. And on the other side of it though, I would say that, I also have learned that, you know, I do have people in my life, like even just with my vocal coach, like him giving, him seeing and and um, declaring my value or talents or whatever out loud does actually help with my own personal like confidence yeah. around it. So it's like an interesting thing because I think there is some value in like being around people who do see that. But I do want to, I think between you and you comes first. Yeah. People can see it first as the mirror. Mm -hmm. I'm was thinking a lot about like health related things. And now I just like don't care as much. That's a just like seriously don't care as much. That's a fucking learning. It's a huge learning. I just don't like right now I'm so tight it hurts. And I'm just like, whatever. I go to classes, I'm like not, I'm like very average in every class that I take, whatever. I just am like, I don't seek to be the best. I seek to feel good. I seek to move. I seek to like, Mm -hmm. just work with what I'm working with. And my acceptance and allowing of my body has like completely, not completely, but it's definitely improved this year. You know, I'm like, yes, thicker than I've ever been, Mm -hmm. you know, in my life. But like, I just... I'm sort of owning it more and more proud, more proud of it and more like excited by it and more excited by the difference that I see in my body. And so I've just really enjoyed like allowing. Mm -hmm. I don't really eat that well lately. I I eat well, but I don't really eat that well. I'm just kind of like letting go of the tight grip. So it's like before it was like super strict for most of my life and then kind of coming out of that there was like binge periods and now I'm in a period of like not really restricting myself at all. And I think it'll balance at some point, but it's been really freeing to kind of like, just always be like, I trust you like to my body. Like I trust you. I trust you. And moving away from that, like perfectionism mentality, never enough, never feeling really good, never feeling like I was worthy and always having that constant conversation. That's really been just like ingrained in my family, my whole life about weight and body And sort of like trying to move out of that as much as I can. So that's been like a really interesting journey. And I think it's been really one of my life lessons. And it's definitely made progress this year. Yeah, definitely. And I think it also frees up a lot of energy, like, you know, mental energy too, and just emotional energy. Like, and yeah, I mean, I mean, everyone out there will, will confirm, but it's just like, you're so beautiful and the confidence around where you're at is like, just is this layer of the beauty that will always attract people to you. Yeah, You know what I mean? And we'll all have like good and bad days, but I just, I think your body, your soul, your angels, like, just like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like just being so with at ease with what's happening right now. Mm-hmm. 
you know? Yeah, that's like life lesson. But I've enjoyed being like, you know, because it's been an interesting evolution of wellness of the industry where people are now in a space where it's like, whoa, this is too much. This isn't balanced. This is like on the other end. And I don't know if I... Nest- For other people, I would definitely say that I was on the end of being too... Like a little extreme. I actually would say that too. But now it's just more like whatever. Like I'm just like, I'm here for the moment. I'm here to like, to learn and to grow. And like this period too is okay. Yeah. And I... If I, I'm thinking about this in real time, but maybe it's for the community to an invitation. Like anytime we shit talk ourselves for doing or not doing anything as it relates to health, wellness, body, food, workouts, whatever. Like, at least for me, it's like, what's really going on? You know, like it's it's not about like, I skipped a workout. Like what is really going on? And maybe it's just simply sitting down and maybe writing out those thoughts or talking them out or meditating, whatever it is. Because I think you've, you, like I've seen you this year where it is just that, yeah, loosening that grip. And it's just like provided so much flow and it's just like really beautiful. And I feel that too, where I, I don't want to beat myself up over anything if I can help it. <laughs> it's yeah, like exactly. too much, it's too much fucking energy. It's like, what do you want to? Literally. Like, just like, that's what it was always like. People... When people look on Instagram and stuff, and I've I i did not really ever compare on Instagram. Mine is always like a self self comparison, self perpetuated mm. anger or frustration. Like, what do you want? Don't worry. And like we're with ourselves all day, every day. It's like yeah. be fucking nice. You know? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. Holy moly. There is no better time to get on track with your nutrition and feel really good, energized, healthy, ready to go than the new year. And Saqqara is our tried and true way to do this. This is a plant-based meal delivery service that is nutritious, delivered delicious and designed to help you look and feel like your best self. They have meal programs, including breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and they're delivered right to your door, ready to eat anywhere in the US, which is so awesome. So it'll enhance your energy, improve digestion, and help with healthy weight loss if that's what you need. And you know, these plant-based meals, a lot of people come to us because we are mainly plant-based. Chris is vegan. I eat fish every once in a while, but you know, plant-based has completely changed my skin, my cognitive function, my sleep. So I cannot recommend it enough. And it's also saving the planet. Let's be real. Along with your meals, you also get supplements, teas, and support from a certified health coach, which is just incredible and really sets Sakara apart. And you can read all the reviews in places like Vogue and Goop and the New York Times. So if you'd like to try Sakara, we recommend highly. They have different meal programs. They have their signature program. Um, They also detox program. They also have a program for brides. So if you're getting married this year, this is an awesome supplement to help you uh, just feel your best for your special day. Um, And Saqqara is obsessed with quality. So their ingredients are organic, all plant-based and holy moly, the the creativity in these meals blows me away every time I order right now. I am super excited for the kimchi and buckwheat soba bowl. Oh, say no more, right? I also am really excited for the sacha inchi pumpkin scone. That'll be my breakfast. It's served with a homemade apple butter. So if you'd like to try Sakara, you can go to sakara.com slash almost 30 and use the code almost 30 at checkout to get $60 off your first order. That's S-A-K-A-R-A.com slash almost 30. Use the code almost 30 at checkout to get $60 off your first order. Does the stress of a new year approaching keep anyone else up at night? (laughs) I'm really excited, but I'm also a little bit anxious and... I need my sleep. I am such a sleep baby. You know what I mean? It's it's when my body is able to heal and regenerate. So I found Calm, the number one sleep app for her, like sleep and relaxation, and it's transformed my night. So I, I listen to a sleep story before bed. The narration is like so soothing. 
They also have meditations and it's just changed the game for me. And you're not alone. If you struggle with sleep, I mean, there are so many people out there. There's over 60 million people that use Calm. So you are not alone. So if you'd like to try Calm, we cannot recommend enough. Calm.com slash almost 30 and you'll get 25% off a Calm premium subscription. So you have breathing exercises, meditations, and so much more waiting for you. You could do this before bed. It could become a routine that really helps you to sleep soundly and stay asleep. So calm.com slash almost 30, you'll get 25% off a Calm premium subscription. Any other health ones? Fitness? No. Wellness? Just... Yeah sliding down to mediocre. I love it. In all areas of my fitness. I don't think it's mediocre. I just think it's more like present. Mm -hmm. Not thinking too hard about like what you need to do, should do. Because also, you know, a lot of that was, and I was trying to think of a lot of the inspiration for that. And a lot of the inspiration for that came from Abraham Hicks' work. Mm -hmm. And Abraham Hicks' work, if you guys, you can even listen to, to them on YouTube, but Abraham Hicks is channeled by someone named Esther. And it's basically a higher consciousness. It's almost like source consciousness. So Abraham talks quite often about us law of attraction, but more specifically to us being energetic beings. And so whenever there's an energetic resistance to something, that energy is magnified and energy attracts energy. So your magnified stress and energy around food, around your body, around things that you don't want, attract and magnify that in your life. So if you do not want, you know, to overeat, to binge, all of these things, that intensified energy and space within your brain and your body attracts situations that will continue to perpetuate you in that situation. So even when you're having situations where you're eating like crap, you're binging, you're eating, you know, trash, you're not working out, lessening that energetic resistance to it or lessening even the energy around it and changing it from like a frustration and anger a sadness to just neutrality is so important. Mm. And then neutrality, you know, that's what I really work to. I don't work to like making it necessarily positive because I'm not at that place, but it's just become neutrality for me. So that lessening of energy brings less situations like that. I'm in less opportunities for me to feel bad about myself, to feel like I'm comparing, et cetera, et cetera. And I think a lot of Abraham Hicks work has like helped so much as it relates to my thought around the energy I put to food, body, wellness, fitness, all of those things. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, We are coming to you to let you know that... (laughs) I can watch it all day. Me too. I literally could watch it all day. How about ready to release? So these are some questions you out there can ask yourself. What is expired that I'd like to leave on the 2019 side of New Year's Eve? What can I let go of before 2020? Um, stories, identities, relationships, projects, ideas about my future and fears, et cetera. Um, and what is the most important story that has been holding me back that I'm ready to dump for good? Mm. Uh, these questions are a part of our, our work with, with Aaron Rose. I'm ready to release like my temper. Mm. I have a fucking temper. And it's just like, it's just like, It's just when I, and it's, you know, the temper is a result of my wanting to control the situation and the people in it and what my expectation of it is. And it happens when I'm expecting someone to say or do something in a way that is fitting with my expectation. So I have a temper around the wanting to control that. And oftentimes my temper is because I am not accepting or acknowledging something that is trying to show up or happen in my life and I'm having a resistance to it on a soul level. So there's like a friction. There's like a friction between what my soul is wanting to allow and that is whatever this person is bringing to me as they are. And I am having an egoic restriction to that. So it is causing friction that is my temper. So my ego is wanting to control and create a result of a situation and my soul is wanting to allow or wanting to have everything happen as it is. And that friction is really where the temper comes from. And I just want to like try and release that or even like transmute that to something else because it just should be like everything, you know, in the Buddhist principle, it should be like whatever it is, is like Mm -hmm. 
cool, that's going to happen that way. Yeah. And I'm not saying I'm going to like fall asleep and just be like, whatever, who cares? But I do just want to be more... Okay. Then, oh my God. You know, because I'm just, I'm just more like seeing things and being like, okay. Instead of like, oh my God. Right. You know, like this is frustrating because this is always happening, all that kind of thing. So the frustration doesn't doesn't serve me. And I want to like release more of that to like allow more joy. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder, has it, do you feel like it served you, like been useful to you though? Like meaning yeah. almost as like a, is it a protective thing? Is it a whatever? Like, yeah. I mean, I, I believe you ready to release it. I'm just saying like, maybe exactly it's, I mean. maybe it was like a, an important thing that you needed just to kind of get through. Yeah. I think it's like oftentimes a lot of, if I wasn't feeling heard, yeah. you know, that's where I would like develop my temper within being young as I wasn't ever heard. I never felt like I could clearly communicate where anyone would pay attention to me or like okay. value what I was saying. So it's probably like an action that I continue where I don't feel like they're hearing me or understanding me. So I'm getting frustrated and I'm trying to like make myself bigger so they hear. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's really like just scaling it back to like make sure that I'm clearly understood and communicating knowing that I'm big no matter what but not needing to get big in that energetic way to make someone else feel small to do what I want. And I'm saying this like very openly and candidly to you guys, like this doesn't happen a lot. Yeah, like it doesn't yeah. happen a lot at all, but when it does, it just, I don't want to be in that space. Mm -hmm. And this is mostly internal situations that I'm feeling in myself and I'm not acting these out, but I don't like the feeling. Yeah, yeah. It's a hard feeling to like keep yeah. in too. Yeah. That's a good one. I'm sure a lot of people can relate. What do I want to release? I want to release, and I think I started to, but it's just that, that like smallness and that like fearful part of me, you know, as it relates to future of the business, future of my, my personal life, of being in a relationship, like, just um, not playing to that smallness. You know, I think I did that for a long time and it kept me really safe. So it's like yeah. giving a little hug and nod to like that girl. But um, it's funny because people wouldn't, some people wouldn't think that you played small. I know. You know, it's so funny. It's like, it's like, they'd be like, well, what? She went to Boston for college, then she moved to, you know, it's like people would be like, no, but it's, it's almost like, but the, it's a knowing. It's like the, for lack of a better term, like the arenas were bigger and it like, or had like clout, right? Like moving to New York, pursuing acting, going to BC, moving to LA, like all these big um, things that I'm proud of. But within those, I felt so small mm -hmm. and I felt um, like I really wasn't making decisions for me and making decisions out of fear. Yeah. You know, and I think like, you know, this relationship that I just entered into with this person that I've known for a long time, just it's, it, it is a, a really cool thing to, to see myself eight years ago mm -hmm. and to think about me and him back then and how I was, I just ran in the other direction because his intention was so clear and pure in my from what I saw, but that terrified me. So to almost like, he saw this, like, he almost like felt me now. And I was like, uh-uh, I don't feel that yet. Or I'm just like, mm -mm, I don't know what that is. That's like way too crazy and yeah. way too big. So it's just really cool to like experience that now and know that, you know, I'm going to be driving now. Like that, that me that is, um, that can feel that expansive future and just, be unafraid because I'm so like our life has just shown us that we're so taken care of. We're so supported every step of the way. It doesn't mean it's going to be perfect, but I'm so taken care of. So anytime I feel that fear coming up, like I do different things, whether it's breathe, I sit, I sing, I do yoga or I eat, <laughs> whatever mm -hmm. it is. But it's just like That's my getting, getting back to my body and like, okay, I am here now. Like I am so, I am in control you know, little Lindsay's like not, not driving. But yeah, that's what I want to let 
go cut that thread. I know. There's so much. So much. So much. All right. That was very personal. (laughs) We have so much more. I have so much more that I want to do and work on and be. And um, I would just, you know, as a last thing, like to talk about the last part of the exercise, which is the part of feeling into that person Mm -hmm. that you are in 2020. So what are they like? What do they act like? Yeah, I think it's like that declaration of, and and Aaron urged us to write out some I am statements to, describing who that you is. And so once that is clear, you can take action to reinforce this to yourself. Yeah. The example that Aaron had for us was, I am a creative genius who spends most of my time creating and exploring so that I can channel the most honest, and innovative creations to the world, which means upgrading an aspect of your morning routine or blocking your calendar in a totally different way to become that new identity. For this, I just, I just want to my segment energy, like of the, the goddess, just like really owning the power, just owning my power even more, mm-hmm. and understanding that sometimes my power can be like intense and sometimes it can just be like the most healing thing whether it's trying to be funny or being funny or the creation or the direction and really just like completely being that force for good and taking the time to rest and regenerate so that I can know that that power is used with clarity yeah and for me that means in 2020 taking more thoughtful time alone to be more intentional with my time and my relationships and finding ways to exercise some of the feelings that I do have in ways that are healthy and helpful for me, whether that's Reiki healings or experiences or sound baths or conversations. So just always finding ways to like move through energy or a class at Taran Toomey, Mm. you know, doing that energetic movement to move through energy that could be stuck in my body. So, and then, you know, that also means me being more intentional about tracking my progress and success through journaling, through exercises in which I can really keep track of how I'm feeling and how I'm doing, because I think it can be really really willy nilly. If you set the intention and then there's no tracking system to it, oftentimes you can get really lost in the sauce. And I'm saying this because I do that for sure, where I will notice some of the growth, but like how really are you tracking it? And that's really when things get serious about any goal, tracking your food, tracking your money, tracking your happiness. You know, I used to do that when I was at, uh, when I was really having dark episodes, Um, I would track my happiness level or my anxiety level to kind of just gauge and really get serious about how unhappy I was. Mm -hmm. And right now it's like really getting serious, even with money, getting really serious with tracking money. Mm-hmm. How much do I want to save? How much do I want to make? How much do we have coming in? How much do we have going out? And that also means too, with like me and my intention to just be more powerful, stand more in my power, is how can I track that? How can I make sure that I'm actually doing that? And then, um, you know, being the most joyous version of myself, the most joyous version of myself allows more breath, allows more space really just is moving a lot more slowly so that I'm less affected by everything going on around me and I'm more creating what's happening outside of me. Mm -hmm. So well said. Um, I think for me, the, the allowing and not pushing is something, you know, I am, I am allowing and not pushing. I I am already who I dream to be. Mm. You know, like that is something that I'm the one I was waiting for. Yeah. It is it is that because I think we're taught in school, we're taught at home maybe, depending, you know, just in the world that we have to take this class, buy this program, buy this thing, invest in this, work with this person in order to become who we want to be or what have you. And it's, it's like fucked me up a little bit, you know, and especially the school thing, (laughs) I think everyone should go to school, but um, I 
there was just so many shoulds thrown at me that I got confused. My soul was so clear. And like me, Lindsay got really confused because I was being told something different than what my soul was like screaming at me. So for me, it's less of that pushing to become this thing, this person, and really honoring every day in any way that I can who I already am. And I am all of those things that I I dream to be. It's just a matter of um, you know, uncovering it through play, through creative practice, through breaths, through um, having deep, meaningful conversations, through being in the world and out in nature. Like, so I, I, I just, yeah, I want to make it a practice every day to remind myself that, yeah, I am the one that I've been waiting for. And yeah, to your point, you know, more more play and more time to to allow that inspiration and those ideas to come in and just the the love and the joy to come in. I mean, I felt, you know, we we spent time recently just a few days um on vacation after our um our Australia tour and I just felt at granted y'all we were in a in paradise so it's kind of easy to chill. <laughs> Let's be real. But I did feel this like this ability and and I, I really just felt you so relaxed and I felt so relaxed too. And it was it was cool because I feel like if we stayed there for even mm-hmm. another week, like I'm curious as I would have to been an like island girl. Literally, like the ideas Officially that come an in girl. and like the realizations, because we were literally just like swimming in the ocean, laying, napping, eating. And it was just a really beautiful, we were very, very lucky to be there, but a really beautiful feeling, especially with you, since we're not in that energy a lot. So it was like so cool. I was like, oh, we can find this next year. And in the mm-hmm. future, you know, not as, as like, often, but I think we can almost like schedule that in where it just allows for that. Cause I thought that was so healthy. Yeah. That was the best. Mm -hmm. It was just so good. So good. I have so many, it's like, I had the realizations and the ideas all the time, but mine is like the integration of those and the allowing of them to like come and go. And just like the nothing. Yes. Just literally like walking in the water and being like, blank. I'm a dead person. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. This is how I move. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was the best. Mm-hmm. And I'm hopeful, you know, just for you guys, like I have so much faith and excitement for humanity and for consciousness and for the collective. I think that from my perspective, from what I've, I'm shown is so beautiful and so expansive and so dynamic. And just, I've loved the way that I feel like we as a society are evolving there's less crime in the United States overall. People are really waking up. People are being thoughtful. This is so dumb. And I know Twitter is like a dark place, but all of my threads on Twitter are all about topics that I feel like I only know about as far as like expansiveness and awareness of maybe even like aliens or government stuff. I know that's like more conspiracy led, but people are really much smarter than we think. And as a collective, I think we're really just rising and becoming better and becoming more aware And right now we are going through deep healing and transformation and it'll be beautiful to see how we come out on the other side starting next 2020. Yeah, new decade, new decade. Yeah, I completely agree. Okay, amazing. That felt really good. We're just- Happy um, New Year. Let's share our resolutions in the group. Yes. People or any say of resolutions these. are dumb, just like Jim. And, and, yeah, literally. Any of these too. Even if like, you know, I was telling Krista before, I kind of forgot we're entering a new decade. And so it's kind of fun to think about yourself 10 years ago and maybe feel into 10 years from now. You know, have like a fun, maybe half hour. I do this sometimes where I'll put on music that makes me think of like that future time and I'll just like daydream. You know, you can call it meditation, you can call it daydreaming, whatever, but I'll just really go, go nuts with it. And it, you can feel it in your body. You get excited, you get nervous, you get, you know, all the things. So I think that's a powerful practice. Um, Yeah, I just think it's a fun one. 
Love you guys. Thank you so much for being so much a part of our year. Seeing you guys connect on the road and just have breakthroughs, Mm -hmm. quitting your jobs, starting new jobs, prioritizing yourself, becoming healthy, becoming more balanced has been so beautiful. And I know life can be really hard at points, but we are always here for you. And I'm really grateful Mm. for, you know, your respect and love for Lindsay and I and what we do. And however we can best support you in 2020, we are working on. We are excited about new things to come and involving you guys in every step of the way. Here for you always. Have a wonderful new year tonight, New Year's Eve. Um, Kiss your crush. Kiss your crush. Kiss your night. Kiss your crushes. (laughs) We'll see you in 2020. Love you guys. Bye-bye.